This is a must watch before coming to Japan. Yes, I'm going to and welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. In this channel, I, Shogo, will introduce various topics about Japan. So, learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, this is your one step deeper. I have worked in the tourism industry in Kyoto for about four years and have met over 60,000 guests from all over the world. I especially had a great time working at Kyoto Samurai Experience, a 90 minute experience of swinging a real katana and Zen meditation. I met a lot of wonderful people there, and we were able to achieve third place in Japan on TripAdvisor for the Lessons and Workshops category in 2019. While I was working in the tourism industry, my guests asked me many questions about the culture of Japan. And I found out there were many misunderstandings. Today, I'll introduce five of the most commonly misunderstood Japanese cultural facts. As I will count down my five picks, it gets more and more interesting towards the end. I hope this will be helpful information for those who are willing to come to Japan in the future. So let's go. Number one, Japanese people are afraid of tattoos. There were many travelers who contacted me before coming to my samurai experience asking, I have tattoos, should I hide them? It is true that people with tattoos are prohibited from going to certain places in Japan. This comes from an old tradition. Having tattoos meant that that person belongs to the gang or Yakuza. Nowadays, however, most Japanese understand that tattoos in foreign countries are art and that it doesn't have the same meanings as it does in Japan. So we don't feel the same fear when we see a Japanese person with tattoos. There may be hotels and restaurants that ask their guests to hide their tattoos, but I myself have never heard of any sort of place. Number two, you must stand on the left or right side of the escalators. In Tokyo, you must stand on the left side. In Osaka, the right. And in Kyoto, you follow the person in front of you. These are local rules commonly recognized in Japan. If you actually come to these cities, you will find Japanese people standing either on the left or right side of the escalators. The other side that's opened is for people who are in a hurry and want to walk or run up the escalator. Although some praise this tradition as how Japan is always near and in order, there is a misunderstanding to this too. The correct way to ride an escalator, according to the railway and manufacturing companies, is to not walk and stand in the center for safety. Some people feel bad having large luggage and stopping the line on escalators. But there is nothing you have to worry about. That is the correct way to ride. Just give the angry people a smile and say, read the rules. Number three, you must slurp noodles in order to show respect and appreciation to the chef. I was searching for where this myth came from. Then I found out this misunderstanding was born because of the culture of tea ceremonies. In tea ceremony, the guests will slurp the last sip of matcha tea on purpose in order to express their appreciation to the host without speaking. From this, it seems that someone started to say that the slurping of noodles and this culture of slurping matcha are the same, but they are most definitely not. Slurping noodles have nothing to do with showing your appreciation and respect to the chef. The two real reasons why you slurp noodles are 1. To enjoy the flavor 2. To eat it quickly Number 1. To enjoy the flavor By slurping noodles, air will be taken into your mouth together with noodles. This enhances the flavor of the noodles inside your mouth. Number 2. To eat it quickly from the moment noodles are boiled, they start to lose their elasticity and become soggy. Therefore, noodles are meant to be eaten quickly in order to enjoy them in their best texture. So if you don't want to or can't slurp noodles, 
that's completely fine. You don't have to force yourself. Number four, it is rude to tip. This misunderstanding has confused too many people for far too long. So I want to end it here once and for all. In the past, Japan had traditions of tipping too. However, now the culture has become obsolete because service charges are originally included in the payments at hotels and restaurants. So in a way, we are already paying the tipping money. And that's why things get complicated when people try to pay extra above the service charges. Then where did the idea of rude come along? Tipping isn't rude in Japan, but handing over cash naked is. If you're going to be handing money to someone as a celebration money gift, it must be in an envelope or wrapped in something in any way. For example, wedding celebrations and birthday gifts. So if you want to tip the workers extra above the service charges at your hotel or restaurants, feel free to. But try to hide it in something, perhaps in between a folded piece of paper. Number five, shrines and temples are the same. I'm sure you'll want to visit shrines and temples when you visit Japan. However, it seems that many people do not understand the differences. Shrines and temples are two very different places. That's almost like saying churches and mosques are the same. These are the three main differences of shrines and temples. One, different religions, Shinto and Buddhism. Two, different gates, Tori gate and Sammon gate. Three, different ways to pray, clapping and no clapping. Number one, different religions, Shinto and Buddhism. First of all, shrines are Shintoism and temples are Buddhism. So they represent different religions. Shintoism is a folk religion that originates in Japan and it has continued since ancient times. It is a religion centered on the worship of nature and there are no books and sentences that describe the teachings like they do in the Bible. Number two, different gates, tori and sammon. Shrines and temples have different gates. Shrines have gates called tori, consisting of two pillars and two crossbars. And if you find two komainu guardian dogs near the gate, it is a shrine. The thousand gates of Fushimi Nari Jinja are famous in Kyoto, but those are all tori. Temples, on the other hand, have gates called sammon. Generally, it has a large tiled roof with a room on the second floor. Temples will have two nyozo, neo statues, instead of the komainu, guarding the gates. Three, different ways to pray, clapping and no clapping. When you worship a shrine, you will do the special prayer procedure of two bows, two claps, and one bow. But at a temple, you must not clap. You simply press your hands and pray. And lastly, bow deeply. But to be honest, many Japanese don't clearly understand the differences of shrines and temples themselves, so you don't have to be too nervous. Then lastly, today's conclusion. I introduced five misunderstandings about Japan. Number one, Japanese people are afraid of tattoos. We understand that tattoos are a type of art in other countries. Japanese are not afraid of tattoos that foreigners have. Two, you must stand on the left or right side of the escalator. It is correct to stop and stand on the center. Three, you must slurp noodles to show respect to the chef. You slurp noodles to enjoy the flavor more and it has nothing to do with showing respect to the chef. Four, it is rude to tip. Tipping is not rude. Handing over cash naked is rude. If you want to tip, it's best to hide it with something like an envelope or paper. 
However, service charges are already included in the prices of hotels and restaurants in Japan. 5. Shrines and temples are the same. Shrines and temples represent different religions, have different gates, and have different ways of praying. They are two completely different places. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If any of the five topics I introduced today was informative, please hit the like button and share this video to your friends and family. And my goal is to achieve 10,000 subscribers by July 2021, so I need your help. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.